And then they'll probably swap over to that Hanzo composition. As you can see now, you can see that they're going to identify with Mono on the Sombra here temporarily. Not only that it's a bunker comp, but also if there is a Phara, because the Phara variation is huge. That's why you see Nanny stick to the Widow. Yep, so it's going to be looking to shut down Otto and Ark in the sky and allow for Flower to really layer in that damage okay, over onto the, the Bastion. Mecho on the Hanzo in this case. Changing it up quite a bit. It's looking to get those extra limbs. Yeah. Pushed back right now into the corner. The barrier will be coming through. They break that one down very swiftly. You can see Justice not really able to sit out on the platform there. Have to keep moving in and out. But Jonak kind of find a first kill as Otto gets taken down. Push off the point. One tick nearly gained for free. Now Ark going to be gone as well as Guido. No supports available for the Washington Justice. Would require a miracle basically to try to retake this one at the moment with Corey staying alive. But Sansam nearly knocked out of the mech. Will just go ahead and go off the side now. Corey gets flower. Well, that's about as good as it's going to get at the moment as the point just goes ahead and gets capped. They're actually staggering him so he couldn't jump off the side. <laughs> uh, you guys didn't really see, you didn't really see it, but uh, you know it's not something you want to see, it's... Uh, especially if you're a Corey fan. But they reframed how to attack the bunker around the Farah. They focused Otto, and uh, Junak was actually able to get that kill, and then they were able to collapse in. On the side of the Justice, now they're going to swap over to Symmetra here, it appears. That might just be temporarily to get the Bastion onto the high point. That is going to be what it is. Putting Guido now back onto Batiste to have that immortality field to keep Cory alive. The tank is nearly ready. Few teams actually... Oh, 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 Junak okay. does it again. Okay. That'll just be it. Ark might not be able to go in for a res. Might be a bit too risky, knowing that Jonak's got eyes on that spot. So, seems like they're just going to lose out on Corey. He does have the configuration tank ready to try to rejoin. But right now, it's six minutes remaining on the clock. They've already picked up a tick here. Immortality field is going to be taken down. Sounds up back into the mech, which means the barrage can come through from Flower. Doesn't quite find the kills, but he keeps them all corralled at the back of the point, so the Justice can't really push forward to try to contest. Configuration tank now going to be expiring. The second tank nearly going to be there. Jonak, oh man, just takes him down right up in the face of a Bastion. Finds a triple kill as Gino and Ark also fall. Let's go ahead and make it four. You got more for me, Jonak. Let's go ahead and say it. Sansom's going to be dumping the bomb, trying to make it back in, but there it is. Gets him in the face, and Jonak. NYXL just take the point on the back of Jonak. Jonak is just about 100 damage behind Flower right now, but second in terms of <laughs> hero damage done on that attack. Nearly 2,000 damage. Look at that smile. He knows what he he's done. He knows got. what he has done. He has focused down the proper targets. He's found line of sight. He killed Otto on the first attack on A, secured the kill on Corey on B. He's famous for this. He's done it again. He has. Let's see what the Justice can do on their attack when we come back in just a bit. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Gentlemen, man, NYXL, 5.34 in the time bank after finishing Hanamura. That man, he's just a monster. He is a monster. He has eight of his nine eliminations were his final blows. So 
he was get, securing those kills in a lot of the ways solo, getting those finishing kills on the fleeing targets. Auto in particular on A was the most important one here. We're just going to take a look at this flank where he's able to eliminate Corey before Corey even realizes what's happening. Arc is unable to heal in that moment, and he comes in alone. Remember, too, when you look at the position of these other heroes, Mono wasn't really in there. He's going to also prevent this remake. Um, but Mono wasn't even really there pressuring yet. He just came in. No one expects the Zenyatta from the side to come through. And the reaction there, once he starts fragging, is for the rest of the Excelsior to collapse in and finish off the kills. And it's a crazy chaotic moment that you can't really expect to happen. And it's, it creates this split of attention between the side of, oh my god, Jonak is killing us, and then the tanks and everyone else who roll in, the Farah. Flower will be on the Batiste, so that allows both of the other supports to play their main role, and Anima on the Lucio. Jonak gets to play his Zenyatta in this 3-3 composition, so... Very defensive comp that they're running right now. You don't really see this on attack ever. Confident that they don't need to go for these bunker shenanigans to get a hold. Corey going to be trying to shut that down with a couple picks onto the support line with that Widowmaker. Otto for now just going to be taking some shots, but not getting too much damage in. Flower does go low, but oh, Jonik almost takes his head off again. Can heal himself up with his shift ability. Corey just can't really get line of sight, and it's against tanks here. I actually prefer this style against side and a good Hanzo. And I'll just run tanks. Pushing Working them very off. well for New York. Yeah, Giannis displacing them as best as possible, but still able to play around. Some decent sight lines and deny them away from Corey, rather. The D go will get taken down. Auto manages to scoop the kill. Looking for a bit more, though. Shot on Amano as he is in the back of the point, still trying to stay safe from Corey's shots. Jonah going to be taken down. Guido finds him with the Hanzo here. It's going to be at the cost of Giannis, but now Corey from the side gets a hit on the flower. Two people gone now. Mono going to be eliminated as well. Washington Justice looking like they found their way onto the point to get this cap with a pretty significant time bank as well. Be about six and a half minutes to try to match against the NYXL with an EMP and a barrage still online. And this is why you run the far. You can pull the attention away from the Widow to allow Corey to do more damage. Auto did way more damage than Corey did. He was way more relevant in that fight. We watched from Corey's perspective because you can kind of see everything that's happening from a Widow's perspective in a moment like that. But... You know, Otto won that point for them, and it's this really cool combo between Widow and Farah that, you know, Luna Takai popularized from Fleta uh, back in the day, right before the first season of Overwatch League we're doing. It's so difficult to deal with with a tanky composition like New York has because you don't have range damage to deal with the Farah. Now he's got the Barrage and the EMP can lead to that combo you were kind of mentioning just moments ago. Let's see if they can execute it well. Well, that's going to be the EMP coming through Barrage, not quite in the best spot. Flower will be take him down, but they got Jonak, and now Anamo as well going to be eliminated, so no supports available at the moment for <laughs> NYXL. Faster run back, so, and Giannis will be taken down, so Flower over onto that Widowmaker, looking decent at the moment, but taking a lot of damage as he tries to play forward here onto the point, and will be taken down by Sansam in the end, as he jumps out with a Translocator. Corey, in the meantime, still picking up a kill there on the Mecho. There should be an opportunity here for the Justice to commit. So we're watching Nene here for a moment, but Corey's got high ground control. There's no one really on the point at the moment, Jonak can't get line of sight. And they were waiting for Giannis to rejoin them. Rolls through the center. Sansa, I'm going to find the kill on Amano. And he's trying to disrupt them. Gets a lot of damage into the Corey. Can, can he finish him off? He get him lower and lower. Will be able to get the kill in the end. Mind Looking for some... Through, Giannis gets rid of the baby diva. Guido under some fire, trying to keep he and Ark alive simultaneously. And will peel back, pick up that mega pack. They stay alive and in the fight for now. Heal the knife through onto Nene, but they still haven't really worked their way over it's, onto the point. Yet. This is incredible that the Justice did not take that point. And they are consi consistently still winning the fight. But this is one of the weak points of Justice is the lack of a, deci a decision maker on the team that's going to call the go. Uh, to hit the point and try to cap on it. They were winning the fight. They opened with three kills and don't get a single tick. They don't step on the point. That's what's more impressive than anything else is that Washington Justice weren't able to capitalize on what was multiple one-segmented fights there. And as we head into this next one, they have to swap compositions. New York can match them. They're behind in ultimates. This is a disaster. What could have been a match time bank is now going to be significantly worse. And that's a best-case scenario for Justice. Yeah, it was a really great start, but now things... Starting to slip out of their hands a bit. Nene just swapping fully over onto the Zarya for going. That pulse bomb that he had available. You know, trying to keep everybody alive. Those in the bio. Nate gets to sleep there on a mono, but they instantly wake him back up. 
That is not what you want to see. Flower, however, going to be taken down, so it's going to be a one-for-one -one exchange at the moment. Nano's falling lower and lower, will be topped back up. Nano's going to be expiring, just as still held at bay, just outside the point. Yeah, they do get a lot of ult charge for Giannis in this nano boost, so that's the one saving grace for them, but with the enemy Zenyatta, Jonak in this case, with the transcends available, it's tough to win a longer fight with respawn disadvantage. Jonak's just looking for kills again. Pushing their way up. Nana gonna be leading the charges as they take the fight over to the Washington Justice. He wants to get that grab online, and he's nearly got it. Has surged up about 40% so far just at the start of this push. You with the primal rage going lower and lower, and I have to leap out of there just to try to survive. You can feel New York is really stepping out of their comfort zone here, engaging hard. Well, grab gonna be coming through. Nene locking him up onto the wall. Sound barrier does come in, but Yana's still gonna get picked off. Ark not able to do enough to keep him alive. And that is going to be the retreat sound coming through for the Washington Justice as they fall below three minutes remaining. Right now, you know, New York is taking fights that they don't normally take. They don't normally take these aggressive fights. They don't normally, uh, you know, are the in they're not normally the engagers when they have positional advantage. So they're really, as I was saying before, stepping out of the comfort zone here. And it feels like trying a completely different play style. And I'm not talking about things like Nene playing the Roadhog. Just how they're defending, how aggressive they're being. Punishing the fact that the Justice is so passive. They never execute on the advantages that they have. And New York is just running over them repeatedly. As a result, they are always the initiators. And they are always going to make the snap calls more aggressively than usual here. But it is working out. Yep. Corey struggling to build up for that Graviton Surge, still going to be 13% away. Nene going to be looking to lap him over halfway to the next one. Corey's got the grab online, 100 energy built up for him. So a significant threat, but Mono's a bigger one. He just takes him down, comes in from behind, zaps him a bit, and the Zarya goes boom. Cleanup coming through, and again, this approach shut down by the NYXL. Washington Justice with less than two minutes remaining. They've got to do something. If we could rewind the clock and look back at the first push, and where they had ult advantage, the snowball that you often see on Hanamura, the double cap, and they won that fight and still didn't step on the point and still didn't commit. You know, you've got to be really kicking yourself now to look at the time bank you have, 130, where you were at six minutes previously. You have the grab available, but you don't have the high energy you had in that last fight. Now you're going to have to build that. And you're fighting into double support ultimates and a favorable choke for New York. You know? That first push, you know, you really miss it right now. Grab going to be coming in. Giannis right there into the front. Not even going to be the, given the opportunity to use that Primal Rage to try to stay alive. Now Sansa knocked out. Corey taken down. The cleanup coming through. The rest of the members just trying to get the heck out of there. And YXL again going for a very aggressive chase forward to try to get these staggers and nearly get Guido. Will just about be able to get him? No. Will get topped up in the end. Just watching the faces of the players on the side of the Justice. No one is really speaking... You know, Sansom communicating a little bit. This team seems to be suffering severely from the lack of a strong leader and a strong shot caller. That voice is just not being heard. They're going to leap in here. One more shot. That's all they've got. The grab needs to be good. That it does. Biding their time. They do build up two ticks at the moment. 34 seconds remaining. NYXL now looking to stabilize. Corey under a lot of fire. Threatening him. They almost get the kill. That's going to be the grab thrown in. Mecco going to be the only one locked up in it at the moment. Will be taken down. Deny the remake. So good shot there from Guido. They need take more. That one away. They need more. They're still trying to fight here onto the point. Sound barrier comes through. Jonah going to be taken down by Sansan with that self destruct. But can they still close this out? NYXL at least going to be forcing it through with the overtime. Nene and Flower both going to be eliminated. Mono dropping in. Puts the bubble down just to try to last a little bit longer. Start taking their way back up. They have to finish off Mecco. They push forward. We'll be able to find it. Guido coming in with a couple kills here to try to lock down this cap onto the point. There's another one there now on the Jonic who swaps over onto the Tracer. Flower comes back in with the Doom Fist. But they push them off. They will be able to get the cap in OT. But there's so much time in the bank for NYXL. Uh, and a tie is all that New York, or excuse me, the Justice can hope for here. Really rough attack there on B. Yeah, it's going to be hard to keep your mind and your mentality in check after what was clearly a very easy point B take. They failed to get it. 5.34 on the clock. Let's see if they can pull off the hold of a lifetime.
here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Five minutes, 34 seconds on the clock for the NYXL. Washington Justice finishing their attack on Hanamura in overtime means that they have to defend a single tick on A. Yeah. Just in hopes of a draw. Cannot get any map victory here. The last time we saw New York excel, uh, you know, no pun intended here, in taking the point was when they killed Otto first. So their focus was to kill the, uh, you know, the Far Mercy before dealing with the Bastion. They're going to, once again, identify the composition before committing. They'll swap. It's going to be the same variation here with Flower on the Farah. But the idea here is to knock Otto out of the sky, then go for the jump in the collapse onto the bunker composition. Nene doesn't have line of sight this time, nor does Jonak yet. They're looking for that angle. Otto's staying on the right side, so once they find that out, I think they're going to switch focus. Oh, already breaking down those barriers. Now it's getting tagged up as is Corey as the rockets continue to fly. Flower pushing forward, gets above them. Jonak going to be taken down, however. He challenged Otto, and this time he lost. And this is great for the Justice, great start. Oh, push into the back, looking for the kill here. Onto Corey, taking him lower and lower, but has that self-healing, has the healing coming out from Guido. So a bit too arduous of a task to accomplish there. Yeah, this time, not everyone on New York was on the same page in terms of the focus here. And they were not able to get the kill on either Corey nor onto Otto. Gonna have to see a Corey retreat here, but... The time is ticking down, and Mecco has barely built any... Oh, Ooh, well, that's going to be really bad. Yana's going to be eliminated, so now no barrier. Need to try to get Ark into a position to maybe get a res, but I don't think that's going to happen. Guido going to be taken down. Sansan's out of the mech. Immortality field and whatnot is all going to be exhausted, so not too many tools to rely on. Flower will go ahead and scoop up the final kill onto Corey as they work their way on it to the point and celebrate with a barrage, and YXL will move up, up to 2-0 in the series. Yeah, and, you know, heading into halftime, you have to think that they're really going to have to reset their minds here because that was an absolutely dominant map of Hanamura when it didn't need to be. And New York, you know, they dominate as you expect. Well, they lead. They now have match point. We'll see if they can close this out or if the Washington Justice will bounce back on hybrid when we come back from the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile. Here's the number one team, the NYXL, going up against number 18, the Washington Justice. And so far, not a whole lot of surprises as we see. It's all NYXL up 2-0 at the half. Before the game started, though, we got a little teaser from the NYXL, Josh. Yeah, it's flower power, baby. They, they were just kind of teasing the idea 
that Flower, the most hyped individual possibly in the whole league to come in. We've been waiting two years. Two years. We're ready. We That's raided right. Mitch's wardrobe. <laughs> we're, we're dressing up for this occasion. By the way, Mitch, you need to skip chest day, bro. <laughs> like this shirt, I'm swimming in it. I love it. But oh, so it, we, we've been waiting since 2017 for this guy. We have. I mean, he made a huge name for himself, uh, actually already on LW, Blue and Red. And then afterwards, we saw him in the Overwatch World Cup, where he played an excellent Widowmaker. He also has been showing off on his far out. And we were hyped as can be for this young man to take to the stage. And then it just didn't happen. For a long time. <laughs> yeah, a long time. For anyone who hasn't seen it yet, let's take a look at what Flower was doing. The man has been putting in work. There's a look at his beautiful silver hair, always shining. But here he was. This is the original time we saw him in the States, in Los Angeles, was popping off for Team South Korea, led them to a gold medal. Yeah, he really made a big name for himself, and everybody was super hyped. We knew that he was too young to play last season, so he didn't really get any game time, and he was stuck on the academy team for New York. But everybody wanted to see this guy play. Now, what did we see this game? We saw a lot of Brig, honestly. <laughs> I was going to say, he, he played what? Farah, he played Widowmaker at the yeah, World Cup. Yeah. Then uh, they show us this Genji. character. Yeah, and now and now he's stuck on Brig. He's in Brig gel along with the rest of the... I mean, he looks great on Brig. Yeah, sure, sure. Now, for anyone who's wondering, why did we see him on Brick? Well, of course, they wanted to run a 3-3. They want to run the three healers alongside the three tanks. And first question for you, Josh, is how did he perform on Brig? I know it's not the easiest character to really measure. Yeah, well, it's difficult as well because the Washington Justice were running a lot of compositions where you can't really do that much on Brigitte. You know, they're, they're running the, the Farah, the Widowmaker. Brig doesn't really do that much. He's just there to try and support the tanks. Uh, I don't think we've seen enough, really, to jump on the hype train okay. too early. I know that we all got dressed up and we all got carried away with ourselves a little bit, but calm down, let's see a little bit more of this guy, because even when he was on his, his kind of traditional heroes, on the Pharaoh, on the Widowmaker, he plays such a, an aggressive, crazy style. It doesn't really gel with New Here, York. Here's a few of them, Zoe, yeah. You know, it, it really doesn't, as you just said. He's like he's like this young kid from the block. He's like that little punk joining that, uh, that, that established adults and, and like yeah. a, a team you know like they're, they're all so defensive so Very measured safe. and he's yeah. he's not that no he certainly isn't i mean look at this he he kills ado as he's going for his barrage and then decides what's the best way to fight the wrecking ball close range we almost with a gave sniper. him a tick guys we almost gave him a tick get on the point yeah and i, I mean i love watching flower he is he made his name by being one of the most entertaining players that overwatch has to offer can play almost every hero very high mechanical skill got the attitude to match does he really fit with New York? I don't know. We'll see. There's a reason that this, this guy hasn't been fielded. I did have to take a moment, though, and highlight Jonak, guys. I mean, how often do you see your Zenyatta in your rank games getting a 6K? Basically, Soul pushed an entire team on Hanamura. I mean, if, it, if it's Jonak, Zenyatta, then yeah, you probably see that often. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't play rank with Jonak very often, though, <laughs> actually. We, we, we always talk about Jonak. It's Weird. great to take a moment and talk about Flower, but let's look at this number one squad as a whole because they have so much talent on their roster. Let's take a look at the bench players. Sabi Olby's available, Pine's available. Right now, Libero is sitting on the bench, so yeah. Flower can be in the starting lineup. Josh, I mean, is there any weakness in this roster? I don't think there's really a weakness in this roster at all, but the potential weakness that could happen with New York is that you've got such incredible players on the bench, and for, for example, Ark was on their bench yeah. previously as well. These guys kind of deserve a starting spot on a really top team. Yeah. So are they going to be the happiest being sat on the bench when they're like such world-class stars themselves? I'm not so sure. Maybe throughout the season, this team will have a little bit of difficulty fixing that kind of the morale of these guys yeah. that are just left on the bench. The thing is, like, uh, if you look at it, really, you know how we usually have, like, a specific player brought in for a specific map because he plays a specific hero. With New York, their hero pools are just so huge. Like, if you're looking at Flower, Nene, a Libero, like, they can yeah. play anything. So almost every player there is inter-exchangeable for the other one. So you can actually make an argument for each and every one of them. All right, quick questions to close this one out. A, does Justice have a chance of coming back in New York's game? No. No, all right, <laughs> pretty easy there. Second question for you, Zoe. Will we see Pine or Sabiolbi on our stage today? Uh, I mean, anything's possible. <laughs> it doesn't really matter for, for New York. They will look strong either way. I, I hope we see uh, someone else also taking the stage, but I'm happy with Flower as well. So. Last but not least, Blizzard Arena. What do you guys think of Joshua's t-shirt here? Looks pretty good. Yeah. We like his style tonight. <laughs> there we have it, guys. That is going to do it for us at the half. When we come back, we'll find out, can New York close it out? They need just one more map. We'll be right back.
They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best. from the halftime break we got some more pets go ahead and check out rocking the london spitfire jersey as yeah. of late i feel pretty good about wearing that one well, likes to test the alamers this one's the boston uprising scarf keep it very warm my cat would not allow me to do any of this stuff so i don't know how these guys are getting away with it houston outlaws snow he likes the outlaws big fan but yeah guys if you want to see your tweets up on the screen make sure you use hashtag out 2019 pets and maybe See uh, your lovely little fur ball, or you know, I know Doe had his gecko on, so I guess fur ball not necessarily the requirement, but yeah. you could see them up on the big screen. But guys, we're coming back in right now. NYXL leading 2-0, sort of as expected. The first map a little, a bit more competitive there from the Washington Justice. They were barely able to scrape by a cap on to be on Hanamura, but with 534 in the time bank, defending that for a single tick, very uh, big task. Too much to ask from them, so they do fall down 0-2 at the moment. Yeah, not a, not a great start, unfortunately. The Hanamura game, I think, really uh, putting them into a bad mental state you'd have to expect. But they had the, the halftime before heading into Eichenwald here to, you know, try to, I, I don't know, refocus, get the morale back up. It's tough, you know? And yeah. we talked about this when we cast uh, Ark's debut game, you and I did, about how... Uh, by the way, before I get deeper into this, you guys can purchase all access passes and check out the player POVs. You can watch Ark's POV. Yes, you can watch Jonak's POV. You could have seen that live. But That's anyway, Ark, when he joined the squad, we talked about how it's going to take time for the, the communication impact that he can have while being bilingual to really kick in. And they need a strong leader now. We haven't seen it today, but you have to expect that eventually... Oh, this we will see it come through. And yes, this is really Symmetra defense. Yep, so Symmetra defense coming in for Otto. Corey's still going to be on the Bastion, so Bunker going to be set up. They have to teleport it to get a quick escape up to the back of the point. It's also, there's a lot of things you can do with Symmetra. Her ability to burn through shields is crazy. Reinhardt shield not going to last very long if you're facing that. It's going to be uh, weak inside this time. Am I using it? Am I not? Okay. Well, he wants to give the opportunity to teleport away for Corey. So you add mobility to a hero, a Bastion, that's not normally able to move around. Yep. 
Oh, it's going to be a jump up here onto the high ground. Mono taking a lot of damage. Will be burnt down. Corey comes up with the double as an ammo as well. And now Nene will be eliminated. So good rotation to the high ground. Pays off quite well. And if you manage your cooldowns correctly, you know, and on the teleporter, what you could do a lot of cool stuff. Like, for example, you can hide and then come back in. As we just saw there, you can reposition behind the enemy team with a teleporter and it's hit them from a different angle. Really rough spot to be in right now. Let's see if Jonah can make it out of here. Life intact. Huge really heal good. Heal the Knight coming through, but they have that immortality field thrown down. They will finally break it. Now Gino and Corey all going to be eliminated just like that. The Washington Justice, the defense is going to be shattered. It looked like such a clutch field coming out from Ark, but as soon as they focus it down, everything unravels very swiftly for the Washington Justice, and NYXL break open the point. That's the thing about immortality fields is the immortality field will keep you alive, yes, but in that moment, you either need to be healed up to full health, or you need to turn the fight while you're unkillable, and they could do neither, so as soon as it was destroyed, everyone was still low health, and it's really easy to clean up after that. Bit of a rocky start for New York Excelsior, though, to get the point. And the, you know, Symmetra Comp did work well for the Justice. They're going to keep it for a little bit longer. They have Symmetra's ultimate, they have the wall, and they also have, soon, the tank, along with all their other ultimates. So I like this idea to hold this one more time while they have control of this high ground, this bridge. After this fails, though, I think you have to see heroes swapping. If it fails, we should say teleporter going to be thrown down as they try to jump across, but instantly the support's going to be melted down. The wall's still going to be coming through as Corey tries to stay alive. Configuration tank going to be used. Jonic nearly eliminated. Will be able to survive, and he'll even scoop up the kill there onto Corey on the back of that bio nade. We've the seen, cart going to keep steamrolling through. We've seen Chengdu experiment with the Symmetra a little bit. No one really perfectly understands how to use these teleporter comps where you literally try to avoid dive by teleportation. It's very difficult to execute that very quickly um, and succinct succinctly in, in order to still get the damage. Jump into the back. Yana's gonna be receiving the nano here from Guido. Sleep's gonna be coming down. Get the heal and eye on him, and the bomb from Mecco will go ahead and pick up the Winston. So gonna be an exchange on those main tanks to start things off. Flower gonna be the recipient of the nano boost from the side of the NYXL as he starts swinging away, just gatekeeping everybody back into the castle. Graviton Surge thrown down by Nana. They go ahead, snatch him up with that ult, and now they clean up house. Sun's on the last one to die. They will push forward here on the B. Now, Corey doing a ton of damage in that last fight, built up half of a grab, but it's not enough, it doesn't matter. But at least he's catching up to Nene right now with the late swap from the Bastion over to the Zarya. As the gates are knocked down here, they're gonna have to reposition. And if they can win a fight here, when there's no grab on the side of New York, that's how they could start to win the ult economy war. But I think this is the fight they need to win if they want any hope of holding C. But this one right here with very few ultimates available for New York. Yep, back out. Playing it safe here. Now going to start pushing forward. Sansa nearly taken out of the mech. Seems like he's going to be losing it here right at the end. Nene will get that last little bit of damage throw. And they will just push all the way back up to the spawn room. Ark, the only one surviving with his Lucio. Corey about to have that grab online, but he needs to get in. He needs to use it. If Mecco takes us away with there's the defense a window. matrix, that could just be yeah, it. Yeah, there's a window where Giant doesn't have trance. He needs to use it right away, but oh. they can't even touch the point. Oh, okay. They're just going to put a boot back. Corey couldn't get the grab in time. And they push him back, and that is just it. That is a uh, feel-bad moment for the Washington Justice. Yeah, that is rough, man. And they experimented with the Bastion, the Symmetra Teleporter. That strategy, we know it can work, but like I was saying before, no one's perfect at it yet. And yep. It's risky, and it's tough to execute a composition that's so tough to execute. It's so difficult to find success against a team like New York Excelsior, our leading team in the standings. Well, 344 in the time bank for the NYXL. Another significant one. Let's see what Justin can get done when we come back from the break. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The New York Excelsior just blasting their way through Eichenwald to get themselves a three minute and 43 second time bank. We saw some uh, some nice change of strategy coming through from the Justice, but unfortunately unable to execute on it. So it does cost them quite heavily. And now they need to have one heck of an attack here if they want to even get close to that time bank. Yeah. Uh... I mean, I don't think you could even realistically expect to beat the time bank. I think what you're thinking right now, if you're the Justice, are, you know, we need to finish, and then we have, need to have an incredible hold on a on overtime. And that's what we, you know, what they nearly had, uh, you know, in the previous defensive setup, right? It took New York a, a second push. I know it's not a lot of pushes, but for New York it is, right? Especially in a matchup that's this one side is this one. So maybe... If they can complete, then that defense will be how they win the map. They need it, though. You know, a draw isn't good enough if they get, if they get this in an overtime uh, finish. So yeah. it's going to be the Far Widow once again. Yeah. New York is running the same uh, triple tank, triple support with Flower on Batiste. So again, difficult for Corey to actually find the kills. It's usually going to be Otto who ends up coming up big. They have the Sombra too, so there's a lot of things that can happen after they build those ultimates here too. They're gonna be going for Quad now as Guido swaps over onto the Hanzo. Yep. So Quad DPS coming through, solo tank for Giannis with Ark on this far. He's gonna be glued to Auto for the majority of this, so getting everybody else topped up, let alone getting a res, especially if they die in a backline position, that could be very rough for the Washington Justice, but let's see if they can make this work for now. He's trying to kill Jonak, and no doubt Corey's trying to find that angle too, but he's just too well protected right now. And it's it's hard to actually get that kill damage with all these shields. Yeah, and I'm gonna take it a little bit. They get the hack on the Mecho, but he's not even in a position where the de defense matrix has to be used, so not gonna be the most relevant hack coming in. To so just try to keep picking their way up to some ultimates, only 40, now 50% about for Otto on the barrage, so a bit slow going for him. And Guido finally getting some damage done as well. Not as pushing into the back. Right click's coming through from Flower, we'll keep everybody alive, but Guido just made it to find Jonic with the Storm Arrows as everybody else was a bit distracted. They couldn't keep him alive. Now Mono gonna be taken down, Corey finds a snipe, Flower gonna get pile driven into the next dimension. So watching the Justice might be able to push their way forward onto the point and get that cap going through, but as I say that, Guido will be taken down. Ark, however, gets the cap at the moment. Two ticks gonna be snagged, and YXL seems like they're not gonna be able to get back to the point to contest this one. All right, this is a great start for the Justice. This is now uh, a winnable game. They certainly can make this game work, and that's the most terrifying part of a you know attack like this on AS. If you lose too much time, you start thinking about how are we gonna even make B a C even realistic here? If we get overtime, we lose the series. So, the Justice now have also that ult combo we were alluding to with the EMP Barrage. If they could set it up. New York's in a choke. This is a good opportunity. Pushing their way forward. EMP ready. Goes ahead. Slaps only hits down, Flower. But only hits Flower, as you say. So, a bit of a questionable one. Barrage right up into the face. Otto will be able to take down Nene, but everybody else turns around and they find the kill onto him. And now it's going to be Washington just, Justice getting spawn camped at A yeah. for a brief moment. Giannis does pull them away back towards the cart. We're going to see Ryan Zarya swaps here, or rather Winston Zarya swaps, you have to imagine. And it's unfortunate for the Justice too, because this is their one window to get a lot of value out of the DPS they were running. Sleep there. On to Mono. Gonna do the sound barrier rolling through out from an ammo. He'll get healed denied, but will be safe. The shielding is just now expiring. Just gonna get himself top back up. Giannis low. And the treats over with the rest of the squad as they start inching the card forward. Corey's still sticking with this widow after that ult. Don't know about this one. Yeah, he's staying through with it. The wall's not really getting him too much now. It's gonna be Arc taken down by the primal rage, Corey, by the bomb. So when you do this, when you make this decision, they went, they committed to the Infrasite and they wanted to get the uh, minefield up for Giannis to try to do something with the ults they had, but you've lost time and you're now even further behind in ults. Nene holds a grab, you're at 2%. You just spawned, you just swapped over to Zarya. They made that decision and it was a hopeful one at best, but you know, there's a big trade-off here and New York are gonna feel great about this position they're in, especially yep. with the choke with the grab. Like, how can you really mess this up? Well, an eat from Sansam would certainly help. Grab gonna be thrown down. Nene at range. Just lobs that one in casually. And the cleanup will be there again as Sansam is just gonna be trying to jump off the side. And Amo, let's give him a nice little boop. He's trying to pad his stats. <laughs> Elimination there. The Get some good arc on that, you yeah. know. 
Certainly. Well, for the Excelsior now, that was one ult used in order to completely shut down the economy of the Justice. Nene is likely, if they win this team fight, he will, but he's likely to lap Cory and ult charge right now. And we still have this choke controlled. It's difficult to even walk out, let alone take a fight. Yep, man, I'm gonna be thrown down. Audionis as he tries to build up the primal range. He's getting closer and closer. Not getting focused down in the back line. And actually, Mono gonna be taken out. Kino will find the kill with that bio nade. Now Nene gonna be gone. So actually, decent break here on this defense for the Washington Justice as Giannis continues to push forward. And that was the fight they kill. needed. That was the fight they needed. He comes in there, is now spraying his new team, other than his old team logo here. And now they, you know, lead the charge in Zarya ult. That was the most important part of all, especially because they're not running a, a uh, Zenyatta on their side. Now they're going to try to control this choke to get free push. Nicely done by Giannis here. He's got a lot of opportunity. Yeah, he's trying to disrupt them, but now he's gotten isolated. Takes so much damage here. And will be taken down. It was a decent start having everybody corralled, but now it's just going to be a wrapper on the backhand side for the NYXL. Actually approaching on two fronts on either side of the bridge to shut down the Justice. They really just wanted to keep the cart rolling because they're so time, ba time bank oriented right now. Their, their focus, their strategy here is on that. They wanted to save the grab for contesting the point itself on the drawbridge, but they fail to actually get any environmental kills there. They fail to get any picks despite Corey getting high energy from that bubble onto Giannis. And now it's 60 seconds to go here. And New York is going to hold them at the choke again. They're playing far forward. It's hard to fan out here. The bubbles coming through as Corey tries to build up that energy. Going to be sitting around 50 with the grab online. Wrapping their way through the castle. Here up onto the ramparts to try and jump down onto the cart to finally get things rolling. NYXL though, four ultimates nearly online. Grab going to be thrown in. Corey trying to knock Mecco out. We'll be able to kill off that baby, and even the bomb's going to be exploding, but it's going to be Sansom taken down. Now the grab. entering grab does come through. That's going to be the sound barrier in from Arc as they try to stay alive. Flower going to get picked off. The rally's still ready to go from Otto, holding on to it, but the card's still going to be sitting still at the moment. They'll finally start inching this one forward as Nene and Jonah get taken down, but it's been 13 seconds remaining, and they haven't even turned the corner to get across the bridge. Yeah, that, was a, well, that was the most impressive fight we've seen from Justice in 3-3, perhaps this tournament. They turned it around, despite the using the grab first. And they are going to have to try to knock on this door here with no ultimates to speak of. Trance almost ready for Guido. He needs it. It's going to be another Primal Rage out from Giannis. This one playing this one a bit safer. Primal oh, is Guido's up. Guido. He's no taking it off the no side. Chance. Will not be able to get this one. Now Mono going to be rejoining. He's looking for another smack. And he is going to find it, I do believe. Ark riding his way back up. Just barely managed to survive. In the meantime, Mecha going to be taken down as his flower. Mono finally rejoins in his Corey. Hits the pavement. Now Auto. Gonna be joining him, and NYXL are turning this one around. Things started looking really rough there as Mono was off on a solo mission, but as he rejoins, they will clean this up. They will maintain the hold. And they will take the series. That is gonna be the 3-0 here for New York Excelsior. Very much, again, a one-sided map. This is not, you know, any surprise to anyone. This is what we expected to see, but you do have to feel for these players playing against their former teammates, reminded by them that New York is the number one team right now and they're sitting down at 18. Well, they're looking for the 4-0. We'll see if they can get it when we come back from the break. Otherwise, Justice, can they pick up on that win? Stay tuned. We'll find out. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile.
and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Washington Justice losing the series, but trying to get a singular map win here as we get ready to move forward into Junkertown to close things out, spare their blushes, and try to alleviate that map differential that, uh, you know, it's the old four, not looking good, at least make it a 1-3. Yeah, I mean, that's always what you're hoping for, but it's hard to keep your hopes high in a situation like this one. But no one is surprised, right? And I'm, I'm not trying to put the justice down here, but I do want to humanize them and remind those fans at home as well that if you are the justice, you are self-aware, you know that you're going up against the currently first place ranked team in the New York Excelsior. You know it's going to be hard, almost impossible. And all you could do is give your best. And I know it sounds like a corny, cheesy thing to say, but... That's what you have to, you know, think if you're the Justice right now, and if you're a Justice fan, that's what you're focused on here as well, is, you know, I mean, how how close can they make Junkertown? Let's find out. I mean, they've been really favoring the bunker composition here on the side of the Washington Justice, so Junkertown, the perfect map for that. This was basically where the pirate ship really came into play, and it was seen all throughout uh, the inaugural season whenever Junkertown was in that map rotation. Yeah, you know, you and I were lucky enough to skip that meta in Korea pretty much uh, when Junkertown was released. So... You kind of hopped over that one, you're right. Yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I know a lot of people love their Bastion comps. Well, right now, uh, the Justice are getting set up on this initial defense, and they're not going to be running it. It's going to be double sniper with Guido on the Roadhog instead. Yep. And this is, you know, the... Halt hook combo we talk about. Halt is the ability where Orisa yanks somebody towards yep. the center of the green object you see on your screen. Or Halt headshot as yeah. well does yes. work with the Hanzo and the Widowmaker if you just know that spacing well it's enough. It's a pull, but it's also a stun, so you have this opportunity to, in that brief moment, get a headshot or get a hook or both. Oh boy, Flower! He's showing us Genji. the Genji! Here we go. This is what everyone wants to see. Corey pops up over the top, gets that body shot there on the Jonak. But Nano Blades. For Nano Hana, perhaps, as yep. he was formerly known. We'll have to see what Flower can get done. It has been a hot minute since we've seen this man on some Genji. Yeah, it really has. And we didn't see it too much, even in the later parts of Apex, either. This Genji kind of was falling out of the meta. Well, we saw a little bit from Shadowburn earlier in the this, this Stage 1. Didn't work out too well. Let's see how Flower fares. Reflection going to be coming up. Chunk out Guido a little bit, but has to dash his way back. Takes a little bit too much damage, and Mono is gone. There's not a whole lot to uh, stop Corey from hitting uh, headshots here and doing massive damage and finishing off a lot of these targets. So he has free reign here. Look at how far back he's playing as well. He doesn't want to be under threat of the leap from Mono and Flower coming in with his swift strike. So he's just sitting as far back as he can. Look at how far they have to get to even touch him. Yeah, and Mono is just taking so much damage in the meantime. Nice shot there onto an Amo. Almost finished him off. Can't quite see his head, but now he's got a demon to worry about as well as a nano to up Mono. And he will go forward and come up with some kills. Otto and Corey both going to be taking down Ark. Kind of dashing over to maybe go for a res, but knew that he was a goner. This will finally be the cleanup coming through for the NYXL as they push their way into A. Washington Justice, do they want to change things up to try to stabilize, or do they stay with the same comp? Looks like they're going to change it up a little bit here. You have to. You're going to see the Dragon Strike come out for Otto very likely. Um, but then we'll we'll see the composition swap. You have to imagine because right now, you know, before Corey, he had great success. He got that kill into Mono, and he was super far back, and they were struggling. They eventually did get in there and kill him. But when you go into this part of the map, you can't really get far back because if you do, you lose line of sight. We're gonna see the Dragon Strike here after he gets the Sonic Arrow for Vision. He's waiting. He's baiting it out. You see the deflect there as well from Flower. He's hoping it's not gonna get the deflect on that one. But let's see when he decides to use this. It'd be a pretty nutty takedown if he was able to find that. Sonic Arrow going to be thrown through again. Just looking to disrupt the cart a bit, but not going to be able to find too many people to halt there. To try to drag the supports through. Unable to work, but Flower will be taken down by Corey, but Swiftly is going to be punished for that one as Mecco scoops up the kill onto the enemy Widow. Otto in the meantime, however, comes up with a double kill. Both Nene and Jonak going to be eliminated and Mecco taken down. Defense still looking decent for the Washington Justice, but four minutes of the clock for the final stretch. The cart is halfway through the streets phase at the moment. Okay, so... You know, Dragon Blade negated. We see, uh, you know, Otto with another Dragon Strike ready. And they have this choke control. This is where you can play Widow. You can play far back. It's very difficult to dive. This is the one section. So if they can keep sticking with this point, there's a way they can keep playing DPS. Here's the Sonic Arrow once again. Wants to wait. Doesn't want to make it predictable. Looking for the choke. Yeah, dash forward. Was it down. You can see them spreading out. NYXL just making sure they're not going to eclipse, not going to be losing anybody. It delays them for a little bit longer, but time 
It is something that they have plenty of at the moment. Certainly. Sound nice. barrier for the engage. Yeah, Hilda and I, it's going to be the sound barrier coming through from Madama. Only catches three. All of them going to get bioed out. We're going to set a Rob's position here. Trying to stay alive. Gets the halt on the flower and we'll be able to take him down. So what was looking a bit difficult will uh, result in a kill here. So building up for that next supercharger right now. The Justice holding this card for a decent little while at the moment. Yeah, I think Jonak's going to hold this. No, he's not. He's going to use it right now, the Nano. Yeah, Nano's going to be out from either side. And Amo under fire. The headshot finally found by Corey. Let's take him down, but they lose out on one of the snipers as Otto is eliminated, but Mono off of No Man's Land will be taken down. It's another headshot coming through as Corey continues to excel with this Widowmaker. This is the well, playground of Corey in the Washington Justice. This is the map where they can keep playing the DPS. This is the section of the map where they can keep running this. Grab coming through. It does lock up Giannis, but he's got the barrier there to help protect him. Bomb into the back. He'll be blocked out by the cart, so Guido is safe for the moment. Huge opportunities here for NYXL now, and the blade is nearly online. Yeah, they've, they've broken things open here. Corey falling lower and lower. Does get the pocket coming through from Ark, but Nene manages to find the kill. Jonah going to be taken down by Guido at the same time. Up the truck coming through. Flower going to get stunned up. Gets the deflection out, but the bomb will take him down. Still very scrappy fights coming through, but the man advantage is there for the Washington Justice as they try to hold on. It's two minutes remaining the cart just in front of point B. Can they continue this defense and deny more time away from the NYXL? That's what they're looking for. Mono falling lower and lower, pushes his way up onto the high ground, trying to stay alive. They try to get Sansam knocked out, but Corey finds the kill onto the Winston again. I have again. to say, Giannis is doing great on the Arisa. It may be his best uh, tank hero right now. His halts have been good. He's shut down Flower multiple times. He's pulled members into self-destructs. He's set up a lot of these really good fights, and he's looking good. And they continue to be able to play DPS. The weakness of this team so far has definitely been their 3-3. We saw that all in Stage 1, and in Stage 2, it's not changed. When they're playing the DPS, when they're playing the Widow, that's when they look at their best. And in this section of Junkertown, that's where you could do that. Now, the Blade here and the potential Nano Blade is what they have to worry about now. As Flower is getting ready to pull it. Jonak, 97%. Here we go. Grab's going to be coming down. Catches everybody, dash through for Flower, manages to find one onto Ark. He will get stunned up and still has the blade rolling for a couple additional seconds. Just layering in that damage to help break down this defense. They've finally done it, but really great time buying by the Washington Justice. 226 for the final stretch. NYXL, they've got some alts ready to go. So still going to be very possible for them, but the Washington Justice showing signs of life here at the Certainly. final stretch. Unfortunately, though, now they're going to have to swap back to 3-3. Guido misses the boat here on grouping up and gets caught there by Mono. But they're behind in ult charge as they come in with the late swaps here, especially the supports are going to be where you really feel it. Jonak still holds on to this nano boost. Mecco's just trying to remake meanwhile. But the positioning here is good for New York. They have the high ground with the Zarya. They have the better Zarya ult charge. And if there's anywhere you're going to catch up in that time make, it's here. In a mirror matchup, you know you're the proficient team and the better proficient team. Well, Mecco has finally got it back. Sleep dart from Jonak, not going to find a connection, and he will get booted off the high ground. He's going to be pushing low, throws down that nano boost here on Amato as he just zaps away, looking for the kill on Aguido again, but we'll get top back up. You could see that Mono had line of sight on to Guido, and he wanted to go in there. That's why the nano came out. It didn't work. Now he has to Primal. Yeah, Primal coming through, but the bomb is out from Sansa. I'm looking for the pick. Unable to find it. Nato going to be taken down with a rally available. Corey trying to escape from Nene, who has got 90-plus energy at the moment with this Zarya. And has that grab still in his back pocket, waiting to use it up for a rainy day. Still just going to be holding it, getting closer and closer. A minute and eight seconds remaining. They are nearly there. Grab going to be thrown down. They lock up Corey by himself. Everybody pushing over to the side will be able to find the kill. The healing just not going to be enough to sustain him. God is going lower and lower. Has to pop that primal rage as well as a sound barrier out from Ark to help keep him alive. They find one kill. They try to drag things back into their favor as Nene gets taken down. Now Jonah going to be joining him. Flower is still going to be swinging away, but the kills are not following. He's offering up a lot of healing to his teammates. The kills are still very much going the way of the Washington Justice. Now it's 40 seconds remaining just to stabilize. Now New York is showing a new color, right? They're playing a lot more aggressive. They're nanoing their Winstons to attack the enemy. Zenyatta, they're playing the opposite of, in a lot of ways, how they played through most of the season. But, you know, Washington Justice are shutting them down. They're playing more passively themselves. And New York are really struggling now to find a lead in terms of ultimates. Nene's grab is now missing versus Corey who's set up to utilize this for the next fight, knowing there's no transcendence for New York. This is an awesome opportunity to get a hold here for the Justice. They're gonna be looking for it, Corey. Trying to build up, needs to get some energy rolling through. So far, has not been using the bubbles. Mono off on his lonesome, does have that primal rage. 
so is a bit safer than it might look. Nano goes low. Grab's gonna be coming through. It gets Mono by himself. Primal Rage gonna be coming in as well as that Nano Boost just to try to keep him alive, and he will not get taken down. Grand Sentence now out from Keto, keeping the rest of the squad sustained. Auto gets thrown into the corner, pops that rally. Will be armoring himself back up, and Mono's trying to rejoin and hits the crown. Goes so very low, single digit HP, and they finally will be able to finish him off. OT gonna be taken down. They can't tag in in time, and then the defense will be completed by the Washington Justice. Yep. They might be able to take a map off NYXL. This could happen. And when we talk about the, you know, stage champions, sure, they're not that, but they're still in number one right now in terms of uh, the ranking for the season playoffs in our round robin. And when you talk about getting map wins, not all map wins are equally valuable in that they're not all equally as easy to take, right? For New York, these were supposed to be the easiest four points they they take this stage, right? Yeah. In terms of map differential. Most teams aren't taking a lot of maps from New York, so if you're able to take one, that could put you ahead of some of the other teams that are towards the bottom, you know, because Valiant may not be able to do that, right? Yeah. Shanghai Dragons, you know, got a draw, but they weren't able to take any points away. And these are the kind of things you have to think about, uh, you know, in a series like this, this is already over in terms of the win of the, the series itself. But in terms of the map points, this is a good one to grab if you're Washington Justice, one of the hardest wins to take in this season of the Overwatch League. It helped you out considerably. I mean, maybe looking to repeat the success they found versus the Toronto Defiant. You remember, you think back to that series, that was a 3-1 yeah. victory for Toronto, but Junkertown went the way of Justice very much uh, like we're seeing so far. We're able to hold it at the final stretch and then get that full push to get the victory. In 3-3, three, three, it's it requires an incredible amount of coordination. You need to be communicating well, you need to be calling ults, you need to be tracking ults. When you're running DPS heroes like the Justice are, and this is a good map for that, you can just individually carry, you can just hit headshots, you don't have to communicate those things as much. So oh. I think that's why we're seeing the Justice find so much success on this map. Oh, never mind. Thought maybe we we're gonna be seeing the Ash for a moment. Has been one of the rarer heroes for us in this stage so far, despite the incredible amount of DPS that we've been seeing compared to stage one. Ash has still not really been one of the more popular ones, but it's gonna be this quad DPS coming through again. This Mecco already under very heavy fire, trying to stay alive and keep that suit intact. Kino just trying to break this barrier. It's what, one of the easiest ways you can build ult is to hit tanks. You gotta get rid of the barrier first, but Hanzo is kind of a tank busting sniper. I mean, this is what happens when you run a comp like this, though, is it's got to be Giannis sitting on, sitting on the cart to try to keep things moving. Gita will finally drop down and start inching things up, but he's got Orion and Azaria to worry about who are wrapping around the backhand side. Giannis tries to get a hit in. Pile Driver. Going to find the connection, but Mono still being pushed back up to full HP. Gita getting closer to that Dragon Strike, you know. Oh. Take it down. It gets a kill. It's going to help search him forward. Corey. However, as well, will be taken down. Now Guido going to be eliminated. Ark, which one do you want to try to res? Might not be in a position at all to bring either back into the fight. And Ark himself just going to be taken down as Flower snipes him, snipes him out of the sky. I think you kind of just want to save your cooldown on that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mecco here, not in the best spot. So this is a good start because they have respawn advantage as the attacker is right outside the gate. The cart hasn't moved very far. Mine's up here, that's what that sound is that you're hearing, uh, you know, in your headset at home, but <laughs> this is an angle for a big barrage. Looking for that boop off. This could be the, the moment he doesn't commit. Almost found it, Chunik, under a lot of fire. They have to use the immortality field to try to keep him down, to keep him alive, rather. I think that was their shot. Now they can all regroup. And this is something that can be mitigated by Defense Matrix now if he wants to use it here. I think that was his best opportunity. Well, Wall's going to be coming up. Corey popping the Infrasight just to try to give them a bit of extra vision. Abraj coming into the back. The team is going to be ready. And Amo from downtown. An absolute no. Just and takes them out with those left clicks. That was... That wasn't it. That wasn't the one. <laughs> and no setup to use the EMP from Sansan to lead into that. So, hyper-questionable. Ultra questionable. Here. I mean, I think at some point you have to question, like, if I don't use this barrage, and I didn't use the last one, I might, I, I might have had two by now. So you feel desperate to use it. You're losing your time. You, the card is not moving. Now you don't have the combo with the EMP. This is a mess. Okay, well, Jonek is going to be taken out. The EMP going to be thrown down. Catches a couple extra members here this time. A lot better of an EMP compared to what we saw on Iconvault. It's going to be clean up on the few remaining members that are over by the card as Mecha will get popped out. And Nene will be taken down, still holding on to six ultimates coming back into this fight is going to be NYXL. They certainly 
can still hold this as there's a minute remaining. Yeah, I mean, Justice are going to have like two pushes, basically. Uh, a push and a half, if you will. If the first one goes longer, they're not going to they're going to basically be touching the point on their next attack. So New York can rock up here with a oh, well, not with a immortality, well, that's for sure. They're, they're not going to have that. Well, sound barrier is going to be how they contest the point. They're not going to have a transcendence as well because Corey comes up with a double kill, gets rid of two of those supports. Mecco in the back is going to get sniped. Corey is just fully free to take these shots. Headshot there onto Mono. They'll push for it. They'll take him down. So only one ult gonna be lost by the NYXL, but the Washington Justice, they get another lease on life. They bump their time bank up to three minutes for the next phase. Yeah, if you get those kills, those solo kills with the Widowmaker, you just eliminate those ultimates on the fight. You eliminate the potential for New York to take a fight despite having six ultimates. We're gonna take a look at this again. Now, notice how oh. difficult this angle is to even hit Flower as he's jumping because Flower is already predicting he's in Widowmaker sight lines in that one moment, and he predicts the jump and still hits it. Very impressive stuff here from Corey. I mean, a second later, or a second sooner for an Anama with that sound barrier, and Jonek is still alive, and maybe that fight does result in a hold, but Justice managed to pull it off on the back of Corey's snipes. And then, hey, ooh, pokes his head out. He only gets it taken off. Looking for the pile drive to come through. Shadow's gonna be out from Mono. Does catch two. Sunsum gonna be taken down. Giannis barely mentioning the sail life for a little bit longer. Seems like he will be kept in the mix of things. We can't play forward, needs to get topped up. Otto's just hovering here, using his fuel as efficiently as possible, hoping to get an angle where Diva's looking the other way, where Mono's looking the other way, where he can get a big barrage. Now he's actually just gonna straight up flank. Mono is just always watchful though, and is always gonna have the shield in the right angle. And they keep getting some shots in, and they nearly take down Flower in that moment. open it up though. This EMP could be barrage it. certainly could be the play. Corey's gonna be swapping off the Widowmaker over onto the Junkrat to try to break them while they're in this tight knit. Close quarters combat. Mono gonna be taken down to the back of the EMP. Some, some, able to find that. The barrage being held at the moment, not having to be invested. Good restraint shown by Otto for the moment. Immortality field keeping a few remaining members alive. Now it's gonna be a transcendence thrown down by Jonak. Window's gonna be out. Flower using that amp matrix. Will be taken down by Corey and Giannis. Gonna be on the exchange. Bomb thrown down by Mecco. Guido gonna be zoned into the back. Still takes a lot of damage here. The cart still has not moved. A minute remaining again. And Washington Justice have barely advanced at all to the second phase of Junkertown. This is a, uh, you know, a win, but it doesn't feel that great for the Justice because you're, you've had to spend so many ultimates, you had to lose so much of your very precious time bank in order to get through. Now, what you need to do is snowball. You need to get these staggered kills like they are now. You need to play forward. You need to play aggressive. You need to try to get a DMAC on Nemeko if, if he pokes out. And, you know, Corey is playing forward ju just for that reason here, up with Giannis. Try to get a single elimination here. That will guarantee them B, and then they can have a time bank to try to win their first map of the series, which will be, you know, the last one as it turns out. But yeah. let's find out if New York can get in here and find an angle. I like the setup for the Justice. They're going to try to defend the cart before contesting. Giannis pushing up here onto the high ground. Will drop in the mines. Aren't going to be taken down, but Jonek on the exchange. Now Flower going to be eliminated as well. Washington Justice trading up, looking decent here. At the start, as we start moving into overtime, seven seconds remaining, and Mato's gonna be taken out as well. The barrage this time from Otto, looking a bit cleaner. The push forward, Mecca will punish him, makes him take himself down with that explosive damage, but the push through onto B will happen in overtime. Again, here for the Washington Justice, keeping their hopes alive. This time, a minute and 30 bump up coming through. The Washington Justice had the triple threat set up there where they had the minefield, the EMP, and the barrage as different things that New York would have to deal with as they were coming out of the choke points. They spread out and were ready to collapse and communicate where the, the Excelsior were going to poke out. And they actually communicated that defense very well. If that fails, then, you know, it's a 4 0. So. You've got to be on point in that moment, and they certainly clutched it out. It's not over yet, though. They need more. Yep, Nene taking a bit of damage. We'll just go ahead and get healed up. Spam shots coming through. Jonek looking for a pick. Now has that transcendence online. Guido to the mash. Final driver there from Giannis. It's the adaptive shield, but the just cannot stick around. Dwexel has so much damage with Nene and Jonek. He's got to be respectful. Very aggressive push forward results in Sansa. I'm going to get knocked out of the mech, the baby demo. Keeping him alive for a little bit longer, but he's just not getting enough charge to try to get that mech back naturally, so they'll let him get killed off. Yeah. One and more push. One more push, one more shot. This is for everything for the Justice right now, that valuable point we were talking about. They have to crush this fight and with no grav to speak of. 
no rally to initiate. They're going to have to hope for a single kill. Everyone's communicating the tactic now. Speed boost is going to be the go call from Ark. And then they're going to come in here. Look at the setup for Mono. Yep, last second swap here for Giannis over onto that Reinhardt. They break him out of the mech. The grass is coming through. Catches pretty much everybody else. Bomb up over the top. Primal Rage coming in. The bomb not going to be able to find anything itself. Rally is out. Flower going to be taken down. But Giannis on the exchange. They're inching Corey. forward. Sansa makes his way back into the back. Mono still just zapping away up front. Corey could do it. He's at 80% here. He's got high energy. Drop if he can flip this. To stay alive. They can delay for a little bit longer because they do have the sound barrier ready from Ark and he's going to be dropping the beat as Mako gets popped out of the mech. Corey goes ahead, uses out with the grab. Sansa gets a triple kill on the bomb and like you said, they might just be able to make this Corey happen. Did it. He got the grab. He lived. He had high energy. He sets up for the big combo there. The bigger bang with the self-destruct. Now there's a chance. Now there's a world in which they can win this. Then he's catching up and grab, but Guido's going to have a transcendence as long as they don't lose a single fight as long as no one gets out of position no one's get, gets picked off they can win this map right now Otto's about to have a rally as well new york excelsior need to be careful about how they approach this because one misstep and justice takes game four a sound barrier and a grab nearly online for the nyxl then ain't looking for a target looking to poke out here. They have to stay glued to this card. Sound barrier in the lead. Catches everybody on the side of NYXL. They try to stay alive. They push forward on the Giannis and they will take him down. Mono finds the hits. The card's still advancing just a little bit, but they push back over to contest this one. Rally Absolutely rolling up. through from Otto. Trying to keep them alive. Transcendence is in from Guido. It's too early. They're going to be taken down. The grab is still going to be there from Nene and Jonic is getting closer to a transcendence of his own. Grab going to be thrown down. Locks him up. Nene builds up the energy. Shatter comes in from Mono. Knocks him to the ground and that is going to be the hopes of the Washington Justice knocked out of the park. NYXL. They will pull off the defense. You see that sigh of relief on the face of Flower. Debut match gets the 4-0, is not subbed out from start to finish here. And New York takes the 4-0, everyone expected. They take it away from former teammates Giannis and Ark. And Wizard Young, you know, the guy everyone's been talking about, he thought he could make a god-tier team. He thought he was the reason why NYXL found so much success last season. But the players proved today that this is a this is not necessarily a true statement because the players take the 4-0 against his new team. Some of their teammates as well fall here. It's a bittersweet moment for New York, but we also got to see a new side of New York, a more aggressive style, more aggressive playstyle, more Jonak on the Ana, more Nano Boost aggressive. We got to see some Flower Genji. So you can see these guys are very close. <laughs> yep, hugs all around here for their former teammates. But NYXL, they net themselves that 4-0 victory. They continue to dominate at the top of the standings. The Titans nipping at their heels right now. Haven't played too many games yet this stage, so climbing their way back up to try to reclaim that first place spot. Yeah, it is, uh, you know, hard to catch a team as quick as this one, going with the four zeros day after day. <laughs> yeah. NYXL still looking like gods in the regular season. See how things continue to unfold for the rest of stage two. But guys, we have Danny Lim standing by on the floor with Flower in his debut. Meow stage, let's go ahead and see how it was. Thank you guys very much. What is up, everybody? I am here with Flower from NYXL. Congratulations on the win. And also, congratulations on your debut. You were, everyone was very hyped to see you play today. And also, I'm sure all the NYXL fans were very, they missed you very, very dearly. But for you, Flower, how was your debut stage like? 오늘 좀, 오늘 데뷔 무대를 이렇게 드디어 좀 갖게 되셨는데 오늘 좀 경기 어떠셨나요? 플라워 선수는 소감 한 말씀 부탁드릴게요. 아. Uh... No, no, Mike is Mike. 그러니까 이제 되게 한 거의 거진 미국 와서 1년 만에 리그 와서 데뷔전 치러서 너무 긴장했고요. 예. 네, 기쁘네요. 이렇게 이기니까 또. 